Hello, this is Sally Counts. I am an independent distributor for Gel Moment. I'm gonna show you guys how to apply a one-step, non-toxic DIY gel nail polish from the comfort of your home. Gel Moment is non-toxic, five plus free, cruelty-free, and odorless. It literally dries in 45 seconds between coats and is a game changer as far as purifying your presence from the comfort of your home in little to no time. So I'm gonna jump in and show you exactly how I apply my polish. For the purposes of this video, I have already clipped my nails, done my cuticle maintenance, and shaped them. Our nail clipper has a really nice natural curve to the tip, and it really speeds up the shaping process of your nail. Our cuticle clipper is nice and sharp and um, gets the job done. Our nail file has two sides. The top side is what you're gonna to use to shape your nail, and then the spongy side is going to be what you use to buff your nail prior to applying the nail polish. So the first step is to buff the entire surface of your nails. This process is very damage-free. The buffing side of the nail file is very soft and it does not compromise your nail beds or your nail whatsoever. What it does is it just helps remove any um, impurities or oils from the surface of your nail. Then you're gonna take one of our cleansing packets and thoroughly cleanse the top of your nails and try to get underneath your nail as well just to make sure you really cleanse all of the any particles that may be left over from the buffing process and to make sure you have removed all of the oils from your nail. What I like to do is put my cleanser back into the packet, seal it up and then save it for later if you're going to get into any nail art or say you need to clean up the edges around your skin prior to curing. Now you're ready to apply the polish. It's very, very simple. You're gonna just pick your colors, map out your nails. Um, if you're gonna do an accent nail, I'm gonna do a couple accent nails today. Um, right now I'm using In The Mood. And to start, instead of shaking the polish, you're gonna just roll it between your hands and this is going to ensure that you don't get any air bubbles in the polish. And the key to applying the polish is to do as thin of coats as possible. And I like to keep a short nail. Um, one of the tips to a long lasting gel manicure is to cap your nails. And this is a technique that I've learned via YouTube University of capping the nails. You're just gonna hold the nail polish brush parallel to your nail, push it down, and then once you're finished with that, you're gonna go from the base to the tip and pull it up. And then this kind of just helps prevent a harsh line at the top of your nail uh, while still capping the free edge of your nail. Another tip that I have is to um, embrace the gap. So meaning you don't wanna hit your cuticle or the sides of your nails when you're painting. Um, so to get better control of the brush, I like to spread the brush a little bit and then I can see where the brush is going when I pull it up through the tip and this really helps me not hit my skin when I'm painting my nails. Here you can see I got a little bit on my skin, so I'm just gonna use the cuticle pusher to clean that up because once you cure the polish under the lamp, it is there, so you're gonna wanna make sure you clean up your edges before you cure under the lamp. So now I'm gonna take one of my accent colors and apply that to my ring finger. And Gel Moments One Step DIY Gel Nail Polish is self-leveling. So if you see any ridges um, or if you have any ridges in your actual nail, the polish is designed to fill those ridges to achieve a very smooth look, which is great. And I don't know if you noticed or not, but you do not need a bottom coat for this nail polish. It is literally just the color and you are good to go. I usually do my four fingers at the same time on each hand and then save my thumbs for the end and cure my thumbs together at the end of the application process. Now, depending on the pigment of the nail polish that you're using, you can get by with two, but sometimes you will need three coats. Um, it also depends on how light of a coat you're applying. 
You do need to keep in mind that thin coats achieve the best result. So if you put on too thick of a coat, your polish will not cure properly under the lamp and it will bubble and you'll, you will know right away if you put on too thick of a coat because your polish isn't going to dry properly. You're gonna wanna keep it away from the LED lamp and not apply it out in the sun because LED light and UV rays will activate the curing process in the gel. So in order to keep your polish at optimal performance, you are going to wanna place it kind of far away from the lamp and do not apply the polish in sunlight. So as you can see, after the 45 seconds under the professional lamp, all of these nails are completely dry. All right, so for my thumbs, I'm gonna do something that I normally don't do. I'm pretty basic with my polish, but I figured for the purposes of this video, I might as well show you a little bit more. I'm gonna use another color for my thumb, and this one is a little bit of a darker color that just kind of shows the difference in pigments. Here's the finished look with a basic application. Now I'm actually gonna go into some really quick nail art. This is our creativity kit. There are about 25 brushes and dotting tools in this creativity kit. And I'm gonna pull in a few other colors because usually when I go into nail art, I'm not quite sure what color I'm gonna go with. So I just make sure I have whatever I might use on hand. All of the dotting tools have two sides to the tool, leaving you with multiple sizes of dots to choose from. Now I'm going to move my LED lamp off to the side because I'm gonna put some drops of polish on the silicone mat, and I don't want the LED light to activate the polish. Now here is where I'm mentally mapping out what exactly I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna use the Chaco Lala on my ring fingers and you just add a little bit onto the silicone mat and the cool thing about our polish too is that you can mix them so if you want to customize a gray and you don't want to purchase a gray you can just get black and white and then mix them up on the silicone mat and create whatever color you want so because I am a sucker for animal print I'm gonna go into a really basic leopard print you don't have to be perfect when you do your nail art. Um, there's tons of tutorials on YouTube on how to achieve certain looks, and the more you practice, the better you get. I have zero creativity in my body when it comes to art or music or anything like that, so the fact that I can achieve a do-it-yourself nail art is pretty impressive. And remember, with our polish, since it is self-leveling, if you are kind of taking your time or if you're doing any, you know, fine lines, if you're doing snowflakes or, you know, just anything that has precision to it, flash cure it under the lamp for about nine seconds and it will just prevent your design from spreading. I kind of blew through this first uh, leopard pattern pretty quickly, so I didn't have to flash cure. And then here's where the saved cleanser packet comes in handy. I will usually reuse that same packet that I used earlier when I cleanse the oils off my nail and I'll just wipe off whatever color I use on the brush in the cleansing packet, the brush or the dotting tool, depending on what nail art you're working on. So now I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of the gold and put it on the inside of the leopard. And you can really pick whatever color you want, so you can get as creative as you'd like, especially if you're just starting out with purchasing colors, you can do so much with this. 
So as you can see, I ended up pulling out another dotting tool because the leopard pattern that I put on is a little bit too big for my liking. So I'm gonna swap it out on the next nail and use a thinner dotting tool and see how I like that. So for my Chocolala thumb, I'm going to put the pink apple blossom polish as the base to the leopard print just to add more color and fun to the nail art. So here's where the cleanser packet comes in handy. If you save your cleanser packet from the cleansing process when you apply the polish, you can use it to clean your brushes off, clean your dotting tool, and wipe off any mistakes that you make along the way. So there you have it. Um, a really quick leopard print nail art is totally finished. And at the very end, what you're gonna do is just use your cleanser packet to wipe off your uh, mix of colors that you have on your silicone mat and throw it away. You can totally be done here, or if you're like me, sometimes you don't want the ridges on your nail. So I usually take our clear polish, Clearly Frisky, and apply that just to whatever nails I put nail art on, and it will just leave your nail feeling a little more smooth to the touch. Some people actually prefer the dimension of having um, the ridges left behind with the nail art. You know, there's a little bit of a 3D with the dotting tool and um, all that kind of stuff, but for me, I kind of like it smooth, so I usually just apply the clear polish at the very end. At the end of every application, especially in the winter and actually a couple times throughout the day, I will just throw on some of this cuticle oil. We have, I want to say, five or six different types. Um, you can find all of the descriptions for each of them on my website. The Almond Quench is probably the best for the winter or dry months when you're experiencing more cracking um, from cold weather. And there you have it. Um, simple as that. If anybody has any questions, feel free to hit me in my inbox. Um, you can go to my website, send me an email. I think I have my phone number on there too. But that's pretty much it.